Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Um, uh, previously, we saw that when using Reflection API, a, the static uh, analyzer of the native image can succeed in most of the time, unless uh, uh, we are basically dynamically loading a class and that the string or the fully qualified uh, name of that class, for example, is not provided at compile time. So there is some information missing that makes it impossible for um, for the native image static analyzer to really look at your source code and figure out what's going on. So if it's not possible to figure out at compile time, what else can, should, can we do? Is there any solution? The answer is yes. And uh, the answer basically, the solution that the uh, Graal VM in general provides for this kind of uh, static compilation is a tracing agent. As I mentioned before, uh, Graal VM comes with the build of OpenJDK. So it already has the JVM, uh, their uh, uh, other parts of the JDK, like uh, Java C, etc. Now, so it has the JVM, so it has the runtime, so which means that it has a Java command. So uh, if you recall, when we run our terminal, as I mentioned, uh, I already have installed uh, various uh, JDKs. And right now, my Java home is looking, uh, pointing to the JDK 17 from Oracle JDK, right? So if I say Java home, uh, bean, and then Java, which means I'm launching the JVM from this Oracle JDK. And then let's look at hyphen hyphen version. This is the hottest spot version, right? Now I've already also set up my Graal home to point to the latest installation that I did, right? 22.1. And if I look at the JVM that comes with this installation of Graal uh, VM, so Java hyphen hyphen version from Graal home. Now it comes from the open JDK build, right? So open JDK 1703 and uh, so these are two different JVMs and the, uh, the good thing about including the JVM with the Graal VM is that they could add more capabilities to it and one of them is a tracing agent some uh, uh, plugin to the JVM that monitors your application at runtime. So if you go to this address, uh, Graal VM 22.1 reference manual native image and then agent. So native image also has an agent command, but the JVM that also comes with the Graal VM has an agent command. And this agent is basically tracks the interactions or basically what your application does. And then it can like them, it can create a configuration file because last time when we compiled the third version, native image said, hey, I don't know what to do. Uh, this is not possible for me to figure out at compile time. So, but if you provide me a configuration file, then I look at that and then understand what you're trying to do. And this tracing agent that comes with the JVM that is included in the Graal VM, it can uh, facilitate uh, the, the job. It can facilitate uh, generating these uh, configuration files. So native images are built ahead of runtime. A static compilation and their build relies on a static an analysis of which code will be reachable right so reachable means which classes are on the class path not only that but native image as i mentioned before it's smart realizes that if there are some classes on the class path that your application never uses or basically the jvm never has to load those class files into memory then there is no point of compiling those and adding them to your application because your application doesn't use them right so reachable code in this sense means uh, um, which methods of classes are called. Sometimes you have multiple methods in the class, but then some of them are never called. Then there is no point of compiling uh, those methods to the executable binaries because they're never used. However, this analysis cannot always completely predict all usages of the Java native image, uh, Java native interface, which we will look in the future. Java reflection, this is our main topic. We saw this before, dynamic proxy objects. And uh, this is a more like advanced topic and we will discuss this in the future lectures and class path resources. And again, this is something we will definitely look at when we also look at the native uh, Java native interface GNI. So resources are like, uh, let's say your application using some resources. There is a CSV file, a comma separated file, and it has some data that your application at runtimes needs to load those data. So the question is, what happens when we compile our Java application to native executable binary, right? So what happens? Do we still need to provide those uh, um, uh, those uh, CSV files separately or something else? Undetected usage of these dynamic features, and again, the keyword is dynamic, which means something that happens at runtime, and the way that the static analyzer cannot figure out 
cannot figure that by just looking at your source code. So undetected usages of these dynamic features need to be provided to the native image tool in the form of configuration files. And that's what exactly what we saw previously that native image was telling us, hey, for this third version of the reflection, give me a configuration file so that I understand what's going on. I cannot figure it out on my own. Configuration files. In order to make preparing these configuration files easier and more convenient, GraalVM provides an agent that tracks all usages of dynamic features of an execution on a regular Java VM. So this Java VM is the one that comes with the Graal VM, right? So this agent feature is not something that is, for example, present in Oracle VM. This is something that only uh, was added to this uh, JVM that comes with the Graal VM. It can be enabled on the command line of the Graal VM Java command. So if you launch the use the Java command from the Graal VM, so I'm using the Graal home environment variable bean and then Java, you use this particular flag. And obviously after that you provide the main class, the fully qualified name of the class that has the has the uh, main method. So hyphen agent lib colon native image agent, which means hey we want to uh, activate the agent, the tracing agent for the JVM, and uh, the use case is for native image building, right? And then equals config output directory, which means uh, we want to use the tracing agent that monitors uh, all the information that is related to building a native image and we want to create those configuration files we want the native uh, the agent to create those and put them in this address in this path for this configuration output directory right so again the first part hyphen agent lib which tells the jvm we want to activate the agent what kind of agent it is it is native image agent right which means we want to activate the agent that monitors everything that could be related to a uh, native image build and this uh, option uh, is config output dir so we want to also specify a output directory that after the execution of the jvm terminates we want to save all the configuration files and here is the path to the configuration note that hyphen agent lib must be specified before a jar option obviously we know that we can use java hyphen jar and give it a jar file and uh, this has to be uh, provided before using hyphen jar or a class name so this three dot means either you pass a jar or a class name that has the main method or any application parameters in the java command line so this has to come first right after the uh, jvm or the java command you have to provide this this has to be, be right after the java command Use native image agent option to trace all the requirements for native image compiler. So this is the key here. Now, uh, before uh, going to the next slide, let's head to Eclipse and uh, let's uh, configure the, let's run our previous uh, Java application, which was using reflection and then enable this uh, tracing agent. And again, this only works with the JVM that comes with the Graal VM. And then uh, let's give it an output uh, director and see what kind of configuration files it's going to generate for us. So here is our, our Eclipse. I have the uh, direct creation of this complex number and then I also have this reflective. And if you recall, uh, when we run this in Eclipse, Eclipse creates a run configuration. So let me run this again. And in order for the run to succeed, obviously in the run configuration of Eclipse, we have to provide the value for this argument. So run configuration, arguments, and as you can see, um, we are providing this argument, which is passed to the string array, right? All right, so um, now note that uh, here uh, I'm using, uh, I configured my workspace, Java workspace, to by default use the JDK 17 that comes from uh, uh, Oracle JDK. So how do I run? So whenever I right click and then say run as, it's going to use the Oracle JDK. How do I run this application with the Graal VM uh, JVM? There are different options. Uh, the easiest one is uh, we want to create a uh, external tool configuration, which we already discussed. I have this Java trace, uh, and this is pointing to the bean directory, bean Java from the uh, Graal VM. And then working directory, I'm setting it to the project location. And now this is what's happening, hyphen CP. 
and project class path again uh, for JVM we have to provide the class path first and then hyphen agent lib this has to come right after that right hyphen agent lib and we can even put it before providing the class path so um, let's put this here so we're telling it hyphen agent lib which agent we want to activate we want to activate the native image uh, agent what's the parameter it's the config output directory that we want to set and where do we want to set it we want to set it on the current working directory which is the project location we want to create a meta hyphen inf directory and then we want to put a native image directory inside that and all the configuration files are going to be stored in this native image directory so this is the recommended way that the official documentation su uh, suggests because meta inf and the native image directory this will be automatically picked up by the native image compiler so you don't need to do anything extra right uh, but there is no need to um, basically uh, put it in the meta inf um, but uh, I recommend to do this uh, for now maybe we can also change it let's say in the current directory puts them in the native directory we which we typically put our um, uh, or let's say just uh, create a directory configuration configuration right put them inside this directory and then hyphen class path is we're using Eclipse and then what is the main class is Java type name and we are providing command line arguments remember that this application requires command line arguments and after we said that when we launched the JVM from terminal after the name of the main class anything that comes after that any string becomes the command line arguments and it's going to be passed as the to that string array so this all looks good let's select our uh, uh, source in the tree and then run our Java trace now as you can see the uh, execution succeeded we have this configuration directory and now uh, uh, the JVM uh, um, basically that comes with the Graal VM activated the agent that is associated uh, for creating the configuration files for a uh, native image base and you see all of these are json files json's are uh, uh, object models in a textual format uh, uh, which uh, are very easy to understand and interpret so jni config predefined classes config proxy config reflection config resource config and serialization config and we just saw that um, these four were directly mentioned in the powerpoint slide jni config proxy config reflect config and resource config right now um, right now we're not using any JNI so it's going to by default use uh, um, the main ones that are associated with the um, with the JDK and interestingly enough it's also registering the main method of our main class uh, as a JNI resource just in case right uh, and then a proxy config nothing reflect config we have something right so this is where exactly it comes from. It says util4j complex complex number name of rect double double. So it's telling it's creating configuration files. Hey, this class is uh, being uh, loaded reflectively and this method is being accessed reflectively. Resource config nothing, serialization config uh, nothing, right? So the main idea here is that uh, this line of code when uh, we run it with the on the JVM that comes with the Graal VM we run it on the with the native uh, agent uh, native agent enabled tracing agent it figures out that there is some reflection going on right now if we um, basically uh, um, if we comment this out and I'm going to clean up this directory and then run my application with the Java VM uh, JVM with the Graal VM which has enabled the tracing agent so if I run it it works fine but if now if you look at the reflect uh, configuration there is nothing there because this part is commented so uh, this part doesn't uh, 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 use any reflections what about for example uh, here this version 2 let's clean up we don't need to clean up because the files get uh, overwritten but here I'm just going to clean it up so Java trace again it succeeds let's look at the reflect config it is still tells the native uh, uh, image uh, compiler that there is some reflection going on but we saw that even in this case before um, uh, 
without any configuration, a native image compiler well, had no problem compiling. So, so I'm going to uncomment this, uncomment this. Let's uh, run the, uh, let's clean this up. And then uh, um, let's uh, run our Java, uh, basically let's select our class and then Java trace. All right, it creates that. And then now we have to feed this to a uh, native image builder. And the best, the recommended way is to actually um, create a directory. So I'm going to delete this actually. And then uh, um, the recommended way is to, uh, or the default way is to uh, create, a, put the configuration files in a meta inf directory. I close that. Let's delete this. So external tool, Java trace, let's zoom in. So um, meta dash inf and inside that native dash image, right? And then once uh, uh, we put this, um, in the meta inf, the recommended way is to then make this directory be available on the class path, this meta inf directory, or basically the directory that is containing this meta inf to be available. And uh, the reason they chose this co convention by default is because of the jar files, right? Because you can also run native image on a jar file and there is always a meta inf inside the jar file. So um, that's how, why this, is, this default way is compatible with the jar files. So what we're going to do, we're going to now select our um, uh, basically Java file that has the main method and we're going to jump to our native image and then here I'm not uh, activating any agent. But then uh, what I'm going to do, if I run this, this is going to fail because the class path is set to the project class path and it's just pointing to the bin directory, whereas my meta inf is not in the bin directory. But because my working directory is project location, I'm just going to uh, append dot to my class path. This automatically puts the project location, which is this Java native image top directory. And therefore my meta inf directory here is, uh, is also on the class path. Now, if we run this, Hopefully our native image compilation succeeds because native image by default picks up this meta inf native image picks up all this configuration. It has this configuration or extra information about the reflection used in our Java code. So native image is probably not going to complain anything. And then uh, it just by default picks up all those configuration files from meta inf. Now you don't have to create, uh, follow this convention of the meta inf directory and then a native image inside that, but that's the default way. If you do that and put it on the class path, then uh, um, you don't need to add extra flags to the native image telling it, hey, activate the agent and then this is the configuration directory. So everything succeeded. Native image didn't complain about the use of reflection here because it automatically picked up all the configuration files in this native image directory. Remember the, requ the requirement was that this meta inf be on the class path. So if we open up a terminal here and then uh, run our application, um, so we have to uh, basically provide that command line arguments Our application require that. And obviously it has to be exactly this, right? Because after we load the class, we are accessing its method. So it, if it's another class, we're going to fail. But now it succeeds. Whereas previously, when we compiled uh, this application without uh, the configuration files, this compilation failed, but now it succeeds. Obviously, if you provide any other class, then uh, uh, this class, this is going to fail because we don't have any other class with this name on the class path. If we provide something that is already on the class path, for example, uh, Java lang a string, uh, and then it's going to, this line of code class for name is going to succeed, but then there is a method of rect, which is obviously not available in the string, right? So this application has a very limited use case because you have to, provide uh, exact argument that it's supposed to. Now, sometimes uh, you wanna make sure that different inputs are uh, um, basically okay. And in order to do that, you have to run your application with the JVM that comes with Graal VM uh, multiple times so that uh, you accumulate configurations more and more, right? Depending on the inputs that the user provides to the application. This is a very important topic and we I will discuss it in the future lectures. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.